take a bit Why do your drops stay too calm? Of course I need a powerful storm The last time you came your flow was tight And despite that we danced until the night It was like an osmosis, not like a fight I can't wait to stroke your beautiful light Greetings, and welcome to Ancient Library, Tome 23, The Seven Hermetic Principles and Recurring Patterns in Nature. That's what I would describe the following things as, the golden ratio, the Fibonacci sequence, and the subject of fractals. And what happens if we put that all together? I'm not an expert yet in these things, but we have to learn. How is a normal human being supposed to keep up with all of these fields and conduct scrutiny? We have to trust people in terms of knowledge. So in my opinion, it's valuable to dig deep for yourself in selected fields and establish trust again. Since we got the internet now, it's easier than ever to communicate in real time and light speed, where distance doesn't matter and the ability to transmit data is possible as well. So in this video we're gonna run through the seven hermetic principles and all the more or less connected patterns which seem to occur in reality, like the golden ratio, the Fibonacci sequence and the subject of fractals in nature and computer simulations. So let's try to get a brief look behind the fabric of reality. The seven hermetic principles. So let's start with the seven hermetic principles. These laws are seemingly around since millennia, named after Hermes or Hermes Trismegistus, who is called Thoth in old Egyptian lore, and Brahma in the Indian Veda or Vedas, in which he is present in a trinity with Shiva and Vishnu. Before we go deeper on the lore, let's run through the seven principles at first. The first one, mentality, mentalism, the all is mind, the universe is mental. Thoughts lead to the manifestation of things and create our state of existence here on earth. Therefore, be responsible for everything you create by being responsible for everything that you think. The second one, correspondence. As above, so below. As below, so above. The macrocosm and microcosm are reflections of each other. The universe is holographic. It is self-similar across all scales. The third one, vibration. Nothing rests. Everything moves, everything vibrates. At the most fundamental level, the universe and everything which comprises it is pure vibratory energy manifesting itself in different ways. The universe has no solidity, as such matter is merely energy in a state of vibration. The fourth one, polarity. Everything is dual, everything has poles, everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. The fifth one, gender. Gender is in everything, everything has its masculine and feminine principles. Gender manifests on all planes. Mental gender is the state of coexistence between masculine and feminine aspects of the human mind. Our left brain hemisphere largely facilitates the masculine aspect of mind or intellect, logic, analytical and linear thought processes. While the right brain hemisphere largely facilitates the feminine aspect or intuition, creative, compassionate and holistic thought processes. The sixth one, rhythm. Everything flows in and out. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. The seventh one. Cause and effect. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is bit a name or law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. So these are the seven basic laws or principles from the Hermetic School of Life. And the first impression I've had years ago is that all these things are somewhat correct, but seem to be formulated very generalistic in relation to, for example, like and unlike are the same, rule four. Maybe deep down there are, but in our short life, with even a shorter span of time to understand the fabric of life, it seems somewhat raw. But of course, these rules and phrases are just the surface of a huge body of lore or work of teachings, which are embedded in one of the latest iterations from 1908, the so-called Kybalion, which conveys the laws of Hermes Trismegistus, who got many names over many earthly cultures, like Thoth, for example in Old Egypt, like I already mentioned. From our current culture and level of self-projected sophistication in 2024 on planet Earth, some of the laws just seem right and some seem more new age hippie-esque for many people. Like to begin with, the everything moves and vibrates bit. 
which in my eyes is very true, don't get me wrong, but in modern science everything which isn't proven to 100% is considered pseudoscience. So our seemingly limited horizon or knowledge doesn't let academia accept core parts of these types of principles or laws. We will pick up on it later on the hermetic principles. For now, let's move to the next section. The golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence. So before we start with the golden ratio, I want to mention that the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence are not exactly the same thing. They are both using the language of numbers to show us patterns in nature and everywhere else. Without the knowledge of numbers, these things would remain invisible. So what's the golden ratio? It's the ratio of sides of a special rectangle, the golden rectangle. If you cut off a square, the leftover rectangle has the same proportions as the original rectangle, which is a plus b over a equals a over b. This ratio is often represented by the Greek letter phi. Value of the golden ratio as a quotient of phi is 1.6.8033988874 and so on. These rectangles are claimed to be in all kinds of artworks and old buildings. Another example is the pentagram in which the number phi is reflected in many orders. Many known personalities like Luca Piccioli and Leonardo da Vinci were fascinated by the golden ratio and artists like Salvatore Dali are using the golden rectangles and ratios in their pictures and artworks. Of course, the human proportions by da Vinci are widely famous. And yes, the golden ratio is also present in the human body anatomy, as in every other animal or plant in our known universe. Pretty mysterious stuff these numbers are telling us about our reality. I want to show another picture depicting multiple golden rectangles and does this remind you of anything? Yes, the golden spiral, which is also known from the Fibonacci sequence. Like I mentioned before, the golden ratio and Fibonacci sequence are not necessarily the same thing, but in taking the ratio of consecutive Fibonacci numbers, the limit of this ratio approaches phi. There are these so-called binet formulas, and I found two formulas which connect the powers of the golden ratio and the Fibonacci numbers. But this mathematics stuff is way over my pay grade, so let's go back for a second. And I have to add, even me not being a mathematical savant, I get the impression the more one understands the straight math concepts embedded in these things, the more demystifying these buzzwords get. Nevertheless, the golden ratio seems to appear everywhere and it gets used for the simplest of processes like the Penrose tiling or the geometry we use to build kites. Some people call it also the ratio of beauty and you can find pictures of Angelina Jolie's face on with overlays of golden rectangles and golden spirals. And I want to stay on this example for a minute. For something seemingly subjective like the attraction to beautiful female faces, is this really just how everything works? Combined with the hermetic principles, are these things the fabric of our reality in which we are the free will playing the game so we can decide actively against or for these things, not trying to be too philosophical in between sections? We will pick up on that in a later section of this program, so let's proceed to the next chapter for now. Fractals and the Mandelbrot set. So a fractal in mathematics is a geometric shape containing detailed structure at arbitrarily small scales, usually having a fractal dimension strictly exceeding the topological dimension. So in more simpler words, a curve or a geometrical figure, each part of which has the same statistical character as the whole. So a quick example is the pattern of a snowflake. This for example is an iteration of a fractal tree and trees and plants are somewhat fractal, which we can observe in nature. And I don't want to get too mathematical again, but there are plenty of fancy named things in connection to fractals. I guess one of the most known ones is the Mandelbrot set. But there are others like the Sapinski triangle, the Julia set and the already shown Koch snowflake, to name a few. We will take a closer look into the Mandelbrot set, which is a very peculiar geometric pattern. A two-dimensional set with a relatively simple definition that exhibits great complexity, especially as it is magnified. It is popular for its aesthetic appeal and fractal structures. And if you watched the full intro, you already saw a few seconds of a so-called Mandelbrot zoom. And people played around with this, inserting all types of formulas via computer simulation, producing all types of trippy MP3 visualizer-esque videos, zooming into abstract looking structures, which resemble the mathematical properties of the Mandelbrot set and all its attachments. I will let you enjoy a few seconds more of a video called Hardest Mandelbrot Zoom in 214. 10 up, 189, 350 million iterations. Enjoy.
So in this picture, you can see the Fibonacci sequence within the Mandelbrot set. The Mandelbrot set conforms the Fibonacci sequence and the periodicities of the Mandelbrot set follow the Fibonacci sequence. So I don't want to act like I'm understanding the 10 pages of mathematics attached to this, but it's clear to say that all three things, golden ratio, Fibonacci sequence and the concept of fractals, for example shown by the Mandelbrot set, are somewhat connected. And we remember cause and effect, so I guess it's either all definitions of one and the same thing, or one and the same fabric, or the first one was creating all the follow-up interpretations. Before we move to the next section, I want to insert a short clip of a seminar of a renowned German scientist who was very knowledgeable in all of these areas. And he's giving us some data on the Mandelbrot set in a lecture about crop circles of all things. Ja, das ist das berühmte Apfelmännchen. Das kennt wahrscheinlich auch jeder. Das Apfelmännchen kommt aus der Menge der fraktalen Zahlen, die erst durch die moderne Computertechnologie entdeckt worden sind. Und zwar hat es der Herr Mandelbrot entdeckt und der Herr Mandelbrot hat an der Cambridge Universität studiert und vor der Haustür vor der Cambridge Universität ist dieses Symbol erschienen, direkt vor seiner Studienhaustür sozusagen. Und das Besondere an äh, dem Apfelmännchen ist, dass es sozusagen die Dimension zwischen den Dimensionen darstellt. Das kann man sehr schön veranschaulichen, äh, wie ein Apfelmännchen aufgebaut ist. <lacht> Das ist die mathematische Darstellung des Apfelmännchens. Wenn man das Apfelmännchen betrachtet und man vergrößert einen Ausschnitt, zum Beispiel den da, und schaut sich das von hier an, dann kann man erkennen, dass hier wieder das Apfelmännchen drinnen ist. Und wenn man das wieder vergrößert, dieses Teil hier, in der Rieslinie hier, dann sieht man, dass das dann wieder Apfelmännchen ist. Und wenn man das wieder vergrößert, kommen in der Rieslinie immer weitere Apfelmännchen heraus. Ja, das geht immer so weiter. Das ist sozusagen eine interdimensionale Schneise, die da drinnen existiert. Und das Apfelmännchen ist übrigens das Symbol der weiblichen Kraft, das ja, wenn man es aufstellt, verdächtig so ausschaut wie der Reichsapfel, der früher praktisch von dem Herrscher mit dem Zepter und den Reichsapfel zusammengehalten worden ist. Das ist der Reichsapfel. Mathematisch gesehen. Is reality perceived and rendered down? What can we extrapolate? So after taking all of these, I will label them concepts in, what can we extrapolate from the perspective of these things, the seven hermetic laws included, where 100% determined real across the whole universe? Are we the personified free will walking our spirit through the ecosystem of a computer game like a matrix? And is the understanding of this concept just the beginning to unlock a whole new set of data, like we have once discovered numerology and mathematics, the language of numbers to show us these things? So is it all a matter of what we want and can perceive? For example, if people take psychedelics, some of them can't handle the trip, mainly because they think reality shifts, and they are seeing things they normally don't. But fact is, the reality did not change, but the brain frequency did. So the rendering process had changed, the reality stayed the same. I think this logic can be used as an analogy to unlock wisdom and knowledge, or to not do it, but living in the same reality. In reverse sense, meaning you can change your reality by learning about things and understanding the processes happening around you, which we on this planet seemingly not have figured out yet, or at least the mighty factions which seemingly control things on Earth. But I want to connect two other things with that above said. The first thing is the subject of randomness on which I could do a whole separate video on, and I might will in the future. But is randomness just cause and effect causing coincidences which are artifacts for our brain computer? How is it explainable that the ID from NEO in the matrix, which was produced way before 9-11, is showing 9-11-2001 for the expiring date of the document? Just a coincidence? This was just one example of many which were predicting 9-11 in a creepy fashion. The second thing is related and the original reason why I brought up psychedelics. There's a story going around of a guy who was experimenting with DMT and found out that people see numbers either embedded in light or the hitting surface of a high frequency laser. Allegedly it is reproducible and movies are getting recorded at this moment. I will link a podcast with the guy in the description for anyone interested and is this maybe the same principle which I mentioned above of the difference of perceived reality and actual holistic reality. I'm happy to hear your thoughts on the subject. So in the end, people can live whole lives without learning anything about the higher structures of reality and all the concepts covered in this video, and most people do exactly that. Are we living in a time of change and rising frequency, or is this the general thought process of almost every generation when they experience breakthroughs at an accelerated rate? 
Who knows? The first impression I got from the Hermetic Laws was why isn't this teached in early school? Later I've realized it is too general, too soft for our current life dynamic. But if these laws and mathematical patterns are working, why we aren't using them in a bigger scale and make this knowledge more accessible to the broader public? Maybe once we were more aware of these universal things. So to wrap this up, I want to say I appreciate any feedback or input about the subject matter down in the comments. So all the best, Libra. This isn't your average everyday darkness. This is advanced darkness. Thank you.